week on Greyhound View, we look back at the second round heats of the Sporting Press Irish Oaks from Shelburne Park. The semi-finals of the Murphy's Irish Stout Steak from Yule. We head to Galway to see how the new development is coming along, plus we take in all the action from the William Hill English Derby. But first, it's the final of the Peggy Kelly Island Bridge Sprint from Harold's Cross. Kelly Island Bridge Sprint came to its conclusion last Friday night at Harold's Cross with a winner's prize of €5,000 and an impressive perpetual cup on offer. We join in fortune for the lineup. The runners now on parade for the Peggy Kelly Island Bridge Cup Sprint. In one, we have Kilboy Oak, trained by Francie Murray from Maureen McInerney and Clare. The hot favourite, he's the son of Ron Oakey and Confused Lady Ideally drawn in one. In trap two, Ballygarvey, a flying early pace son of Prince of Tinra and Ballygar Flash, owned and trained by Ed Durvin in Longford. He's available at five to one, but he's won with claims. Three is Bellali Mick, trained by Patsy O'Callaghan for John Stack and Kerry, a son of Mustang Jack and Spotty Sands. He's a leading southern sprinter. He's been running very well. He won a semi-final in style. In four, Rack and Ray Prince, trained by Pat Kelly for Tommy Everard. This is a son of Vintage Prince and Dreen and Lady, a wide-running tracker. He needs a little luck. In five, St. Patrick's Day, trained by Seamus Graham for Dan and Hugh Sweeney in Cork, a son of Joanne's Town Cash and Feisty Lady. Another one that needs a bit of luck. He's one of the outsiders. And finally, trap six, Bally McMinney, owned and trained by Liam Dowling down in Kerry. This is the daughter of Staples Joe and Wise Minnie. She's the Breeders' Cup sprint winner. She flies to the corner, ideally drawn, and she's the main threat to the favourites. Well, there are the runners for this seventh race is the Peggy Kelly Islands Bridge. Sprint final, my choice, number one, Kilboy Oak. To lead home, number six, Bally McMinney. And for third, we're going to nominate trap number three, Bally Mick. The runners now in traps for the big one, the Peggy Kelly Island Bridge Sprint, the hair on the way. The favourite in one, Kilboy Oak, an odds on chance. In two, Bally Garvey. Trap three, Balali Mick. In four, Rack and Ray Prince. Five is St. Patrick's Day. And six, Bally McMinney. The hair coming around the second corner up behind traps. And they're away. And first to show is trap number two, Bally Garvey. Kilboy Oak going up well on the inside. On the outside, number six, Bally McMinney. But into the corners, number one now. Kilboy Oak who takes over from number two. That's Bally Garvey in third. Number five, St. Patrick's Day gets a clean run. But out front, still number one. Kilboy Oak, number two, Bally Garvey, a strong challenger. As is number five, St. Patrick's Day. But Kilboy Oak wins it. The favourite wins it. Second is number five, St. Patrick's Day. Third, number two, Bally Garvey. 17.48, the winning time. And the result of the final of the Peggy Kelly Island Bridge Sprint, the winner, the favourite, number one, Kilboy Oak, second, number five, St. Patrick's Day, and third, Trap 2, Bally Garvey, the winning time, 17.48. This really was a close affair to the corner. Bally McMinnie flashing away from six. As at number two, Bally Garvey. The favourite not away to all that great a start, but his top class early gears just gets him there. He's on the inside. He's the perfect draw in the sprint. And he takes up the running at the corner. Bally Garvey takes a bump. He hits Balali Mick, who hits Bally McMinnie. Their chances ended at this stage. But look at number five, St. Patrick's Day. He tracked very well, got a very good run on the inside. But number one, Kilboy Oak is never going to be picked up once leading into the home straight. And staying on the stronger, he holds number five, St. Patrick's Day. Back in third, Bally Garvey. The winning time, 17. 48, a good return. It's in one box suited him, and I think without one he was in trouble, but two the way he ran up to the bend. But he ran well out of the box, held his position. Once we were on the rails, I knew we'd take him at the bend. The semi-finals of the Murphy's Irish Stout Stake took place at Yule last Friday evening, resulting in a big upset for the favourites in both heats. Al Keevney takes up the commentary. Dogs are in traps now for the first semi-final of the Murphy's Irish Stout Stake. One Canary Captain, Nicky Sparrow is two, Dilemma D is three, four Heartlands Point, Jags Air five and six Big John Jarnley. With an outside draw, he's fancied big time is six. That's Big John Jarnley, Canary Captain the Danger. Here comes towards Traps that are off and racing. Big John Jarley not well away. He's last. Out the centre, Hatlands Point. And Canary Captain between them at the opening bend. A lot of trouble. And our favourite is back in last. And it's Hatlands Point that goes through now. Dilemma D is second. Jack's Air has moved into third. Big John Jarley and Canary Captain have a lot to do to qualify. Out front, Hatlands Point. Dilemma D is second. Still third, Jack's Air as they swing the final turn. There's going to be an upset here. It's Hatlands Point up towards the line. Being pursued by Dilemma D. Very close for third. Canary captain is there as well in contention. A check now on the result of the first semi-final. A win for Heartlands Point, second Dilemma D and third Canary captain. The winning time, 29-25.
Well, the failure of Big John Johnny to make it through to next weekend's final is the main talking point. He was exceptionally slow away from the traps and ran into huge trouble at that opening bend, bumped off Nicky Sparl, and from there on, his race was run. He couldn't come back into contention, so our favourite is beaten in the first semi-final and an impressive win by Heartland's point in the end, 29-25. But all the trouble was at the first bend and Big John Jarnley for Christy O'Callaghan is out of next weekend's final. A reminder once again, three to qualify. In one, Rovers Estate, two, Barnfield Ranger, Society Princesses, three, Shades of Adam, four, five, Weatherman, and six, Baltimore Bay. In five, Weatherman, he's likely to take all the beating here in the second semi-final. Here approaches Traps, and they're away. Weatherman is out very well down the centre as well. Barnfield Ranger in contention for the lead at the opening bend. Barnfield Ranger and Weatherman very close. There's some trouble there, but it's Weatherman that moves in front now from Rovers Estate. Barnfield Ranger is in third. Three to qualify. Shades of Adam still well in contention, but our leader by three at the second bend from home is Weatherman. Close for second, Rovers Estate seems to be in front of Shades of Adam. They come into the home straight and it's Weatherman now being pursued by Rovers Estate up towards the line. Rovers Estate and Weatherman from Baltimore Bay. The result of our second semi-final, it's a win for Rovers Estate. Second Weatherman and third Baltimore Bay. The winning time here, 29-41. Looking back on the semi-final, well, it appeared when Weatherman was out so well and led at the opening bend and avoided trouble that he would go on and win. He had a sizable lead down the back straight by maybe three lengths into the, the third bend, but then Rovers Estate was always in contention and made considerable ground between the third and final bend and in the home straight made up all that ground to pip Weatherman at the line. A tremendous victory for Rovers Estate. The time, not the best, 29-41. The trap draw for next weekend's final was carried out by Bob Roberts of Bordnagan. It is, of course, the Murphy's Irish Stout Stakes, valued at €5,000. In one, Dilemma D, two, Canary Captain, three, Rovers Estate, Heartlands Point is four, five, Baltimore Bay, and six, Weatherman. Bookmaker uh, Dermot Coffey, you're smiling here in Yall tonight. Two upsets. Uh, the bookies going home very happy tonight. Yeah, there were two brilliant results in the final and the two semi finals now, um, especially the last one. How, how did Weatherman get beat? That was insane. Um, Rovers Estate just picked it up in the last couple of yards. Um, the first seat then, at this point, just made all, just took the bend off. Canary Captain made rest. It's going to make a cracking final here next Friday night. Um, Weatherman drew trap six, he's got the plum draw. I, I put him in the fight for on favourite. Um, I think he was very unlucky tonight. Now he just couldn't clear Barnfield Range at the first bend. Uh, next week, with a little bit of better looking running, I think he, was, he just could make all the running. So what's the, the betting likely to be for the final itself, do you think? I'm going 8-1 the Lemody in trap one. Uh, trap two, Clary Captain is a 4-1 third favourite. In trap three, Rover the State is 14-1. Trap four, Heartless Point is 7-2 second favourite. Trap five is Baltimore Bay, he's 8-1. In the bottom, trap six, Wellerman is the fighter for on favourite. The fancied ones here are the three inside ones, and Top Chill is out. He's flying away. Top Chill into the bend. The ever popular Galway track closed its gates to greyhounds and punters alike at the end of October last year. Their week long festival meeting at the end of July and running into August attracts record crowds. But unfortunately, this year is to be an exception, as the stadium is undergoing a major facelift. Operations manager Mossy Moran now explains. As you can see, we're, we're standing here in the middle of the new Galway Greyhound Stadium. And uh, as we look out onto the track behind me, uh, we're just about to start uh, a new development out there. Uh, we're going to completely realign the bins. The first and second bend is going to be campered, and the third and fourth likewise. In actual fact, we've got a, an architect in to survey the whole lot, so there's a major job going to be done. It's going to start in the next week or so, and we hope to be finished in three or four weeks so that we can get back for the Greyhound owners to get them trialling well in advance of the stadium opening in a couple of months' time. So, uh, like I say, it's very important for Greyhound trainers to have proper facilities out there, and we're definitely going to have it this time. Big job being done on it. And we're going to have uh, plenty of car parking space. We have a new one up to the left there, and one down to the right. There'll be enough for about three to 400 cars, which will be ample space for the stadium of this size. Back inside the stadium again now, and we're standing here in one of the corporate boxes, of which we have two. 
Each of the corporate boxes has 36 seating for 36 people in ample space. Now the corporate Greyhound racing is really taken off and it's like if you have a small party or a big party, you know, this is the place to come. If it's so small you can transfer yourself back to the restaurant which is just behind me here which facilitates 66 people from any number from one or two up to whatever you want. And further packed from the restaurant after that then again is a seating area which holds about 100 people seated. And behind that is the bar. There's four bars all together in the whole complex with three upstairs here, so you don't have to be going from corporate to restaurant. There's a bar beside you all the time. This is the second floor of the actual stadium. Downstairs, we have a fast food area, more bars and more totes. So I think what we'll do now is head down and have a look at them. As you can see, this is just one of the air conditioning systems that the stadium has. It's hugely impressive just shows you all the work that has to go in to a stadium of this size. Now we're down in the ground floor area of the stadium. Over here is the main bar downstairs. And over to the left of that again is the fast food area, which will serve fast food all night. Behind me will be a wooden floor with all seating for people to have their bit of fast food. Over there, there's two full sections of tote betting, which is very important. And full of television, flat screens, the whole lot, so people can go outside to the bookies and bet, or can stay in here and watch the racing on television and bet on the tour. We're out here now in the front of the stadium, and this is the new turnstile entrance to the stadium. It's in the site of the old turnstiles. We're opening our new facilities in a couple of months' time. We're changing our race nights to Friday and Saturday night. Looking forward to seeing you then. In part two, we bring you the second round of the Sporting Press Irish Oaks at Shelburne Park and the English Derby Final. There was a superb night's racing at Shelburne Park on Saturday night where the second round heats of the Sporting Press Irish Oaks were the feature. For the second week running, it wasn't a greyhound, but a man that was the star. Ollie Bray recording a brilliant treble for the second week running. Axel Grease was the star in the second heat, recording a blistering 28 42. And they're away, and first show is trapped number three in the middle. Kilquan last, but quickly number one, Axel Grease shows in front from number three. Kilquan last in third. Now moving seconds, number two, Airmount Liz. Number one, though, Axel Grease leads from number two. That's Airmount Liz in third. Number six, Zetlin Zico. Then comes number four, simply vintage, but down into the third corner. It's number one, Axel Grease that leads. Number two, yeah, Airmount Liz in chase with number four, then simply vintage. Further back, Kilquan missed, but out front, number one, Axel Grease. She'll hardly be caught at this stage. Number two, Airmount Liz does come home fast, but number one, Axel Grease, an impressive winner of this second heat. Second, number two, Airmount Liz in third, number three, Kilk won last 28 42, the winning time, a blistering performance. I'm sure we hope that she'll stay sound and, and keep banging them lids. And, and, and if she keeps, she keeps doing what she's doing, she has, she has a, a really, really, really good chance of winning the Oaks. Yeah, we hope if she stays sound, keeps banging the lids, Ollie keeps waving his magic wand. So, who knows? Yeah, might go one better than, than last year. The second leg of the Ollie Bray treble was completed in the very next heat, with three star girl running in the stripes, running a fine race. Around the opening corners, and number one, Munsboro, lucky there with number four, Free State. Now, number six, three star girl swipes to the front. She won't be beaten at this stage. Number one, Munsboro, lucky's in second. Back in third, number four, Free State. But into the third corner, it's number six, three star girl that leads. Number four, Free State challenging in second with number one, Munsboro, lucky. Further back, number three, Vancouver Hero. But around the final corner, it's number six, three star girl staying on strongly. She wins it. Second is number one, I believe, Munsboro, lucky. Third, number four, Free State. 29.08, the winning time. And they're away, and first to show is Spellbound with number... Outright favourite for Oaks Glory, Spellbound, was expected to complete the Olibre treble in easy fashion in the penultimate heat. Though Patience Pays, running from trap four, made her work hard for victory. Down the far side, Spellbound and Patience Pays in third. Number five, Alan Joy, then comes number six, Drums at Dante. Into the third corner, number three, Spellbound leads. Patience Pays isn't going away. Number six, Drums at Dante, running a hell of a race. Around the final corner, it's number three, Spellbound with number four. Patience Pays, neck and neck, up the home straight. Number four, Patience Pays, number three, Spellbound, coming to the line, very close. Spellbound just gets there. Second number four, Patience Pays, but what a race between them. The winning time, 28-94. 
and first to show is number five. That victory completed the treble for Ollie Bray. Incidentally, he had a fourth runner, Charity Mindy, and she qualified in third in heat four behind Miss Blue Eyes. But it's Miss Blue Eyes that goes to the front. In second, number one, Bally of a Coke Lady. Neck and neck into the third corner. Number five, Miss Blue Eyes. Number one, Bally of a Coke Lady. In third, number two, Charity Mindy. Further back to Ballyhead Flyer. But around the final corner, it's number five, Miss Blue Eyes. That's still in front. A length clear of number one, Bally of a Coke Lady. In third, number two, Charity Mindy. But up the home straight, it's number five, Miss Blue Eyes that wins it. Second, number one, Bally of a Coke Lady. In third, number two, Charity Mindy. 28.93, the winning time. We're flying, flying at the moment. Yeah, the, the bitches are all running wild. Even Charity Mindy at her ran a cracker and. She'd be the least, about, you know, fancy to the forward them, but hope to stay running out that way. For many, Mustang Mega is the biggest threat to Ollie Bray's Oaks aspirations. She recorded 28.68 in the opening round and went eight spots quicker in Heat 5. Dolly out of the second corner. It's number one, Mustang Mega, with number three, count again. Then comes Mount Heller Dolly, producing a big run into the third corner. One, Mustang Mega. Number five, Mount Heller Dolly. Number three, count again. Hasn't gone away, but out front, still number one, Mustang Mega. Mount Heller Dolly trying her best to close. Further back, count again. Expect her to come back, but out front, still number one, Mustang Mega. Mount Heller Dolly and number three, count again, but up to the line. Mustang Mega wins it. Count again, second Close for third, 28.60, she's a cracking bitch. She ran well, the track is running a little bit better maybe tonight. Didn't get out that way, she doesn't run as fluent out of one. Uh, she, she probably runs better off the middle and runs the bend better off the middle. She kind of, she, she worked hard for it without being impressive, but uh, I'm glad to be still there anyway and hopefully, hopefully we can keep going for another couple of weeks. And flashing to the front, number six, Clay Cora. Going Another of the major fancies is One Yard. She adds a little bit of international flavour representing England. She won the following heat in a blistering 28-60 also. Down the far side, and number six, Glen Cora goes to the front. Number two, One Yard coming back at her. Further back to number three, sign on Starlight. Into the third corner, number two, One Yard hits the front. Number six is in second, Glen Cora. Number three, sign on Starlight, and Eurodream come next. But around the final corner, it's number two. Bit of trouble there, number six, Glen Cora's body bump. But number two, One Yard wins it. Second, number five, Eurodream. And and third, number three, sign on Starlight, 28.60, the winning time. And they're away, and first to show is trap number five, Armani Pearl, number four now, Ballinclair Lark. Showing One that needs no introduction is Long Valley Tina, last year's Bitch of the Year, won the final heat in absolutely thrilling fashion. Incidentally, she was Paul Hennessy's 1,000th winner in Shelburne Park. Then comes number six, Long Valley Tina, should be close at the finish, around the third corner, number four, Ballinclair Lark, coming back for more, Armani Pearl on the outside, here comes Long Valley Tina, she was third last year, around the final corner, number five, Armani Pearl, here comes number six, Long Valley Tina, coming to the line, Long Valley Tina wins it, second number five, Armani Pearl, and third number one, Lovely Dog, 28.72, the winning time. Well, it's one of the great nights of the Greyhound year. The final of the William Hill Derby here at Wimbledon. It's packed behind me. The atmosphere building up. Everybody, of course, wanting to know, will Top Savings win the Derby? He's 4-9 to nine favourite as I speak to you, but there's going to be plenty of support for other dogs, particularly Man of Cash from Trap 1. Unfortunately, no Irish trained Greyhound in the field, but all six, well, they began their lives in the Emerald Isle. We'll be cheering them all on. They're shoulder to shoulder on the terraces. All eyes on the start. Favourite, top savings in six. The early pace expected from Man of Cash in one. We're off and racing up towards the first bend. It's Troopies Hewitt, his best away from two. Farno Burnett. Man of Cash is rushing up, but the door slammed in his face. Top savings is at the back as they head down the far side. It's Troopies Hewitt for Andrew Ayanu. And in front from Farno Pocket in second. There comes one Man of Cash, top savings toiling in behind. Troopies Hewitt, who got a tremendous start. and he's in tears. A shake there from Charlie Lister coming over to shake Andrew Ayano's hand. Now, Andrew's had stints with Arthur Hitch, with Nick Saber. What emotion shown there at the pickup. Trouble as they left the boxes between Farlow Pocket and Lark Hill Bullet. Top savings didn't come away well. Got a shunt from his kennel companions. He's trying to dive for the rails. Meantime, Troopies Hewitt 
who trapped out best of all. When he was in three earlier in the competition, he did his best sectional. He's done it again tonight. He flew down the far side, giving Chase Farlow pocket in second. Trouble there for Larkhill Bullet at the second last bend as well. Farlow verdict in fifth at the second last bend, running on so powerfully to take second. But Troopy Stewart has gone on to win and win well. An astonishing event here as Troopy Stewart goes on to beat there, trap two. Farlow verdict, top savings, I believe, has grabbed third in the end. There's the trouble for top savings. A slow start trying to dive in for the inside, but never got there. And it was all about Troopy Stewart going on to win. Owned by Mr. A. Mazam, Ali Mazam, and trained by Andrew Ayanu. Great night for you. First, first run in a derby, first winner, of course. Are they very emotional? I can't talk. I can't say. I had a feeling that something, it was a good week for me this week, and I had a feeling that something special was going to happen, but you can't say anything. When Charlie's got three dogs in the final yeah. and a top saving, especially, you just, you can't say anything. Well, Six just got hit up a five going to the, but you sure it's an early place, your fellow. It's as best as we've ever had him. I told Jonathan when he came down, yeah. this was it, the ready-made dog. Well, things mightn't have gone quite as expected in the Derby final. Available at 25 to 1, Drew Bishiot. Breeder with me, Michael Dunphy. Michael, it must be great to be a, a Derby winning breeder. Yeah, it's a great honour. Like, you know, it's the, the, the big one, the English Derby, and it's nice to breed the winner of it. Like, and a big you know. double, too, the consolation as well. Yeah, uh, that's the way it goes. Some nights you're lucky, and when you're lucky, that's. Just tell me how you came across Hewitt, or who, how the sale eventually happened. Um, Tom Morris Rowe bought him actually for Nicky Sava. He buys a few for Nicky on and off their office. And um, he just asked us one day, rang up and asked us, and I said, there's a nice dog there, and they just came back and bought him, and that was it, and he went over. He went to a, a graded race in Thurston Hall Green, and then Nicky took him over after that, you know. So this is the one. He won two group ones now, so that's a good going, like, you know. So from tomorrow on, the phones will be ringing even more than they've been uh, ringing up to this. I know, it's just nice, great thrill, like, to be here as well, you know. It was, it was fantastic, you know, to see him go around that bend in front. You knew you had a good chance. <laughs> I suppose now you're hoping he'll come over to run the Irish Derby. Ah, yeah, but sure, like, it's, you, you hope for the best of them, like, to keep them sound and all, like, for that length of time, it's, it's eight weeks away, and that's a long time in dogs, like, you know. Well, Michael, go and celebrate. I know yeah. you have a Munster final to go <laughs> yeah. to tomorrow, but this is a good start. A to double. Maybe the double. <laughs> well, well, folks, that's the scene here from Wimbledon. We've had a shock result, Troopy Hewitt winning the English Derby. Top savings got into trouble on the way. The question is, will we see these dogs now in the Irish Derby? Coming up very shortly. Time now to look ahead to the fixtures and on Thursday is the first round of the Leinster Champion Puppy Stake at Ennis Corthy and the Cox Cup gets underway at Newbridge. On Friday at Harold's Cross it's the semi-finals of the multi-bet tri-distance. Tralee hosts the hospital benefit meeting to include the final of the Kerry Group 550 sweep. While at Longford it's the second round of the Bruce Betting Longford Derby. And the Murphy's Irish Stout Stake comes to its conclusion at York. Then on to Saturday, it's the quarter-finals of the Sporting Press Irish Oaks at Shelburne Park. And on Sunday, the Northwest Derby gets underway at Lifford. And in next week's programme, we bring you all the action from that benefit night in Tralee. The final from Yule plus the quarter-finals of the Sporting Press Irish Oaks. <laughs> <laughs>